Hey guys, my name is Tana and welcome to my channel. If you like what you see, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. It'll mean a great deal for me if you guys come in and show some love and support. I'm in this location and it's a beautiful Monday morning. As you can see there, the sun is shining and uh, the birds are chirping. And I'm happy because I'm uh, driving a beautiful car today and uh, it's the all new. Let me flip it around. Ready? <laughs> yes, here we are. That's the Mazda 3. Now, this is a car that you need to look at it for a while, stand back, and just gaze at this car because the car's lines is just that. It's just beautiful. A um, lot of reviewers, a lot of guys who bought this car always equate this car to a work of art. And I can get why. Because think about this. We're living in a world whereby car manufacturers have the ability, have the capacity to go to designers and say, look here, I want this car to look uh, modern age, new, uh, hip, funky, whatever it is. And, and that always comes down to the cars being very similar. Uh, this car, although you see in the front, um, it has that modern look being sharp and sleek. You know, how all lights now are small, how all cars have got... Uh, large grills, how all cars have got lines and curves cutting across, but they've chose to soften up those lines. Just look at those those things there. I, I don't know what, what they are at the bottom there, but uh, it causes the sun to reflect. And look at that, you know, and that's a beauty, you know. And when they could have just stuck the car to a point that make the car sharp uh, angular lines, and keep the back the same but no 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 Mazda did not do that Mazda worked over time and what it done is that made it a car which has got very sleek lines which goes all the way here and curves up uh, a very um, I don't know Ferrari looking kind of kind of car because who would imagine you got a front end that is so sharp and come to the back there are absolutely no lines what do you see here going across they are just reflection of the Sun uh, hitting on the car and it's just all curvatures if you see we come on the side they're all curvatures you know so yes body line this car um, from afar you'll be um, if I if I can't see the front and I only saw the silhouette um, I'll be um, fooled to think this is a old school car this is a one of those, um, I don't know, dolphins or um, uh, more of the, I guess, the 90s era, um, uh, 90s or 80s kind of era car, uh, whereby they were cars were made with design, with flair. Uh, but then you'll see, well, this car is new. It's just, Something is different about this car. And you get up close and you'll see the front and you'll see the side. And then you'll see those uh, kings on the door with those uh, mirror frame and you're like oh you know what it's a Mazda yes it's a Mazda so again um, like or hate um, it's a shape that you need to sit down and think about it and uh, I think it will grow on you if you give it time I know I have <laughs> so again uh, let's not waste time now and let's get right into this um, I think um, the exterior is pretty much the same hatchback as uh, you've seen on other Mazdas. Um, hatch in the back, very sharp nose, uh, very sharp nose in the front. Um, what's different about this car is all, although the um, the car is the same, is the rims were different. They made um, they gave us larger rims. The, and I guess accessories. Uh, what drives the car is I guess more on the inside. And that's what we'll do now. We'll walk inside. So here we are back the inside and let's do this um, let's start with the car and this is what you get when you come to play yeah very nice dash here uh, now if you notice that um, I was outside the car for easily about 10 15 minutes and I got into the car and immediately the Bluetooth picked up on this player and it played uh, off my phone uh, for my Spotify. So I'm quite impressed that 
this car has got extremely uh, fast connecting Bluetooth services. So uh, kudos to that. I really enjoy um, that piece of gadgetry. So again, on the center console here, on the, on the dash, uh, sorry, uh, the center one, it's a um, digital uh, LCD sc uh, screen and the sides are actually manual. Um, I think this is a good combination. Uh, from afar, you can't tell apart whether any of them are actually digital or analog because they just look so seamlessly integrated uh, until you press like uh, info and you see that uh, it will toggle among the different different modes that you have there. So yeah, so very, very well execution about uh, this uh, digital cluster. Inside, uh, oh my God, look at this. You know how they talk about design? I think this is design. Um, uh, Mazda has just aced on this design here. Um, I tell you why. Think about this. I'm not sure whether the light picks up, but let me just get some uh, light to the sunroof. Oh yeah, this guy has got sunroof. Yeah. And let me get the car in an angle whereby there's more light. Yes. So, first up uh, is the dash. You need to talk about the dashboard here. A car manufacturer could have easily put in a vent there, maybe here and then put some knobs here and there and call it done but no no not master uh first off they um they made sure when they in, they uh, made this uh screen over here the design was if you look here I, I'm, I'm putting the camera right up to my eye level now and if you see the dash which goes across here and then there's the display screen over here it just barely touches though the the uh, the horizon line where you see the hood so the idea was when you drive you're not supposed to see anything else it's supposed to be uh, uninterrupted and they've done that exactly see it's just beautiful and see this is actually a separate piece altogether and the size is just i think just nice you know um, with uh, my viewing angle coming this way and um, and they made a, a hollow uh, on, on, on this uh, part here so my angle just gets in to this part and to this part without blocking my view outside so this is actually fantastic on this part here this is more harder than this again there's no reason to do so but they did it they did it to make sure that the uh, the car feels different the car has got different textures and uh, obviously this is the uh, the part which hits the sun more often and something more durable is required here opposed to here so so yes and then you're going downwards you got your aircon vents aircon vents for the passenger um now the vents here they could have made the vents uh one here and one here and be done with it but they figured the vents are here and here and these vents have got this kind of um uh, i don't know what you call this this uh, uh there's a word for this groove uh, whatever this it's a uh, slits here okay and this center part here if they let it be blank or maybe piano black like most cars manufacturers the design will be interrupted so they made sure they made the uh, slit to go all the way across from here to here this piece here has got no function whatsoever except to complete the look of the car and that's a car manufacturer which goes the extra mile you know and then if you see over here they've made this um, kind of metal loop that goes around kind of nice the nice design to it and this metal loop here yeah it goes inside here and stops there but over here it goes down and comes here all the way here yes 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 and then it continues here and we think we're done yeah that's it that's the metal loop but not much there they said look here i don't loop there from from afar from afar something is missing so they've continued on this journey on this this side here and they made this loop come all the way here and come back down come back up here this part again has got no functionality except to complete the look why because they can because they care because they want to make sure the car is complete as possible nothing was spared you know and even coming down here um less is more is what i gather from this car uh, the infotainment system on this on this uh, machine here is pretty fantastic 
let me just off the uh, system here this screen here mind you it looks like uh, it's a black and white monochrome screen but it's not it's actually a full color screen uh, when I would play my let's say my uh, oh, second, let's, let's go back to um, oh, let's say call history oh sorry bad idea showing my number of people um, let's say go to my infotainment system or entertainment system like here we are. I'm now playing crazy in love Beyonce and as you can see here there is a um, icon here of the um, the cover art and it's full color so it's a color screen and it's quite sharp actually uh, when you put it on reverse you'll know how sharp it is you see for example see extremely sharp but Mazda has chose to make sure that the display here it's black and white monochrome so it doesn't distract you while driving fantastic stuff fantastic stuff here um, it's all by choice by, by, by thought process by options you know uh, even here when you're driving um, most car manufacturers try to make this part over here as fancy as possible to make sure that uh, this stands out because people in the back when they come and see in front this is what they see this and this uh, not Mazda they said look here we are BMW fanboys <laughs> so let's copy from BMW and also uh, what works this to me is one of the best layout for uh, echo control you know I've got uh, two uh, climate controls one for the uh, passenger and one for the driver or I can sync the uh, climate control or I put it in auto and yep temperature easy as that uh, fan speed circulation off and on and where to blow and that's it that's all you need for a climate control and also if you notice if I'm driving um, your hands are uh, on the steering and if I were to just put my hand down here, I've come to the point I've got used to the fact that if I would just finger, finger, <laughs> put my finger along here, there is a, a indent on this corner and this corner. So I've come to the point in the last two days to, to know that, look here, oh, you know what, this is the icon up, uh, the blower up, or this is the off and on. So um, in two days, if I can figure that out, I think um, it was by design to make sure that this is as easy as possible to use. So again, fantastic stuff from uh, Mazda. Uh, again, coming down, uh, the center console, and you've got the uh, gear shift again, normal gear shift up, down. Um, the, 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 the throw on this, uh, I believe also, is not, it's not too, uh, too, too long, nor is it too short. So I think it's a good mix uh, for the throw. Uh, to give them more uh, tactile feel, I guess, you know. Um, the mode here obviously are only two spot or off um, then you have got your normal auto hold parking brake um, volume control so this to me is again it's a very reminiscence of a luxury car uh, your BMWs and Audis they are known to have these kind of um, I drive system in fact I think this is called Mazda drive I think yeah so yes very nice and then the magic happens here so this console here, uh, this uh, armrest here, if you can see, this is my arm and uh, as you can see, it's as long as my forearm and if I would open this, this will come all the way up here, you know, up here, uh, which means it's impossible to hold this and close back, which is impossible. So what they've done is, <clears throat> press the lever here, push it back, get your stuff or open it. So it's a two two uh two step approach to open this press yeah pretty smart and inside as you can see uh lots of room usb connectors still like, like this yeah so yeah so that's the um that's pretty much what the driver sees uh, again um over here you've got your window toggle switches and see look at this these are metal satin chrome finish you know they don't have to do this but they did so because they were driven by passion they want to make sure the car is as complete as possible um, and not just a half big good um, everything you touch in this car it's nice every single thing you know and that's a rare thing to say about a Japanese car <laughs> Um, the same car in this category, like the uh, Corolla, the new Corolla, all this. 
uh, you would not get this finish no way uh, it's not even close by a mile so if you uh, like interior spaces um, this is probably the better car to get yeah. seats again look at the seats these uh, bolters here they hug you in very well you know if anything uh, someone who's uh, probably a bit uh, larger in size they will not appreciate it. these seats because they are actually quite body hugging which is good because this is kind of a car you want to throw around you want to feel the road um, so if you're the person that doesn't like um, kind of some hug, uh, tight hugging seats this may not be free for you but uh, I absolutely adore these seats here okay so let's go in the back and see what's happening up in the back um, so that was my sitting position I'm five foot seven um, and as you can see this may be a hatchback uh, but for a family of uh, four or five I think it's fine or four I guess because uh, headroom sufficient um, legroom yes more than sufficient you know even if I were to uh, put my size 10 feet uh, here yeah I, I could put my feet all the way uh, within this um, uh, cavity space here. Yeah. Center aircon vents. Well, that's about it. You know, nothing else to report on the back. Um, they do not give a, a Changi armrest of the CX-5. It's just a normal um, armrest. You know, but other than that, um, the party is in the front, not the back. Uh, like the CX-5, we've got the uh, rear seat belt indicators so if your passenger are not wearing seat belts it will indicate you and from here what do i see from here um the view from the back um it it, it almost screams that this car was designed for the driver <laughs> it wasn't for the passenger at all um everything you see in the front uh, from those dash there how they they slant towards the uh, driver uh this car is de definitely a driver centric Car. Door bins again, uh, pretty comfortable, and uh, I've got these uh, lovely um, uh, holders for the rear passenger to hold their arms on long journeys. This is nice. The only thing is, over here we have this, but if you go to the front, for the driver, um, it's more of I don't know, it, 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 it's more of this, you know. And when I'm driving, my hand actually goes all the way up to here. So this is, I guess, more for to hold the door to close, uh, but not uh, for you to rest your arm. But on that side, if you notice, the passenger can rest their arm um, and uh, enjoy that long journey. So yeah, that's my walk around of the CX3 hatchback high spec 2.0. Um, stay tuned as I will do a drive around of this car. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm now in the all brand new CX3 hatchback 2.0 high plus. Um, this time around, we'll do something different. I'll give you a viewing angle from this side, and I'll uh, as I drive the car, I'll give my commentary uh, what it feels like to be on the. Uh, driver's seat so uh, let's get cracking and let's go so off the back um, as you know like this car let me put the yeah uh, to engage the gear again uh, put it to D off the handbrake and here we go the first noticeable difference on this particular car uh, is that the steering on lower speeds is more on the harder side it isn't like a uh, I don't know uh, it isn't like a uh, Corolla for example where the steering uh, tends to be a bit more lighter and I think uh, what has happened is they have tried to make the car as much a driver's car so there's more feedback uh, when you're driving the car so, so yeah so the, the steering on low speeds um, it's not as light as other cars which I actually 
quite enjoy it makes you feel more engaged while driving the car uh, on slow speeds um, NVH um, noise vibration and harshness I think that the tires on this car which the Bridgestone Turanza doesn't fit uh, this particular model um, to me it, it sounds as if it's a bit, a bit more on the harsher side uh, than what it could be um, maybe it's a tires and I think it is a tires sorry I think it is, it is the tires uh, but when you get up to speed um, the car is uh, very nice you know the absorbs all the hums and uh, undulation on the road see when I go faster nothing but at slower speeds yeah you do feel and hear all the vibrations on the road and I think it's more tires than anything else so again slow speed cornering um, one thing I found different on this car was that uh, this car has got a rear has got a rear uh, <laughs> rear torsion uh, beam suspension, and what that meant was um, there is a, a, a like a uh, setup in the back whereby the uh, absorbers are mounted to a, a long piece of beam. Um, this helps to when you corner, for example, what happens is um, when when one side loses traction, the other one is also kind of pushed. Um, and you have a camber gain. A camber gain is when, uh, when, when, when one wheel loses traction, the other one is forced to push down to give you more gain. Normally, it's achieved with an anti-roll bar. Here, it's achieved by using the torsion beam, which helps to flex and um, gives you traction as you drive along. So, um, when it's a very sharp corner, um, I can feel there is kind of um, instead of instead of losing control uh, sideways when you do extremely harsh corners of normal cars this car tends to almost skip um, and that's not a bad thing because the car is uh, very planted and, and flat opposed to I guess um, cars with multi link so it's a different way of doing this and again I'm talking about extreme cases where, we, where you you go into corners and uh, take corners that are um, beyond limits uh, where it's uh, meant to be driven um, uh, normal driving I think this car is fantastic um, so again this engine is a, a 2.0 normal uh, naturally aspirated engine uh, what that means is uh, unlike uh, turbo cars where the power kicks very early because uh, um, it is stimulated by using the turbo this car the maximum horsepower on this car which is the 162 163 kicks in only at about 6,000 rpm which is pretty much just at the tip of your car going to red line um, what that means is this car is designed for you to uh, push uh, to get all the power you need out of the car and it also means is that um, the power curve is very linear now, as you go the faster you go the more power the car gets but because this is a 2.0 there's ample power for you to use throughout the uh, uh, ref range um, it won't give you a sudden uh, jolt like a normal turbo car uh, this power will be more uh, how do I say it's more natural uh, uh, the more you go the more you press the more power you get that's something that's very uh, something you can predict uh, in terms of driving uh, characteristics so and again we're going through normal um, Monday morning traffic uh, today is obviously the day after Diwali, so I'm, I'm on leave, so I figured why not go and torture myself to drive through traffic uh, to give you the experience how this car fares in a traffic condition environment. But maybe the traffic isn't so bad today because it's holiday, <laughs> so I don't know. So as you can see, when you go on lower speeds, uh, you do get a bit of... Um, uh, vibration or not, the, the noise from the tires and again I think it's uh, more the tires than the car itself but uh, I must say at all speeds in this car it gives you that sporty feel so if you're a person you want to daily by family or yourself and you want to be you want to feel special you want to feel um, I guess uh, sporty uh, throughout the day uh, this is something you should consider because um, it does make you feel like you are uh, a race car driver because you know you are in your seats here it's hugging you 
uh, you've got a head up display exactly head up display in the front there you've got um, your, your head planted and you're looking forward um, your your shoulders are pushed forward because there is a center there's the uh, bolster here so imagine if you're sitting and your hands are arched front frontwards uh, curved in holding the steering uh, it's almost like being on the track it is <laughs> and then as you lay your hand on the steering your tip of your other three fingers will rest on the pedal shifters you know and again i haven't used the pedal shifters much in this car but all that put together with the uh, uh, center um, uh, speedometer um, yes it's a very sporty feel to drive this car it's very special you know again doing a corner at very low speeds in traffic um, <laughs> it's a very nice car to drive I must say you know very very few cars uh, stir up emotions like Mazda these days and I guess that's what car is because every car gets you from point A to point B um, if a car is meant to be just driven to get you places I don't know uh, buy any car that is the cheapest buy a used car use it for a while throw it away and get another car but if the car is meant to uh, reflect who you are your personality uh, it meant, it's meant to reflect uh, what you like Mazda is something you should really consider I remember a quote by a senior sales uh, VP in America um, he made a quote about Mazda and, and, and his quote was the Ma uh, Mazdas are not for everybody and that's a good thing because they weren't making the car for the masses they're making the car for someone who want to be different uh, they made a car which doesn't uh, fit the same mold as any other car in the market uh, because why be that because they are not the, the, the they're not main manufacturers in, in, in Japan they're probably like 15th or something like that in Japan uh, but they figured if I want to make cars let's make the best car possible and that shows you see um, the interior the finishing the panel gaps you know every single little in this car is excellent even the paint they could have gone and chose your typical uh, red, white, and blue, green, and whatever it is, uh, typical colors, metallic colors, and, and, and they'd be done with it. But they chose to invest uh, their energy and time to make their own special color, which is the soul red you see in this car here. And this car, this color, I tell you, I was driving along, all the makchis, uh, all the all the makchi, uh, when I'm driving slow, and uh, again, driving slow uh, past the makchi, they were all looking in my car because sorry not my car but this car because uh, it shines it shines like nobody's business so if you're a person who doesn't like attention maybe the red isn't your isn't your choice but in any color uh, the car does stand out so yes sir. to give you an idea um, going along um, one of the busiest road you can get uh, on a uh, Tuesday afternoon uh, after Diwali, um, if I open my window, just get an idea of how much uh, soundproofing is on, on this window here. Again, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's ample. But I do think the car was designed not to give you a diffused uh, feel, you know. Um, uh, it, it wasn't designed to completely blank out the uh, sound from the exterior. It's meant to give you a little, a little bit of um, a cabin noise, so you get to feel the environment. So again, they, they are very smart about emotion because a car manufacturer like Mazda could have easily made this car totally mute, totally diffused. Uh, you can't hear anything outside but they chose the car to be a little more garang you know what i mean uh, you get to hear a bit of the engine you got a bit here of the you got to hear a bit of the uh, exterior and i guess cars in this in this uh, range the civic the corolla m 3 <coughs> share that uh, characteristics uh, in, uh, very very much in common again uh, in front there i've got a mazda 3 um, going in the same color as this I'm just going to show you though 
the sedan compared to the hatchback the sedan, the sedan looks so sedate looks so common yeah. honestly guys if you get this car get the hatchback the sedan it's fine but it doesn't serve emotions like the hatchback and think about it the sedan and hatchback uh, the sedan gets a bit more boot space uh, but other than that I think the hatchback uh, in the future I think as a resale value in terms of looks in terms of uh, your ROI on your um, emotions this car I think has got the better ROI so guys thanks cheers uh, let's continue on later hey guys um, I was just going through the spec list earlier and I noticed something uh, you know how I was talking about how the steering feels a bit more I know tight and I was thinking this car has got hydraulic power steering and it's not it's an electronic power assisted um, steering which means they could have made this car as light as possible but they chose the car to be a bit more you know uh, it gives you the feedback uh, while driving so again um, amazing of Mazda to make that conscious decision uh, to make a car that uh, gives back so again see now now I'm uh, uh, doing the corner uh, in uh, what's this this is the one that's going to Sunway um, so much fun guys driving this car if I had this car opposed to the Almera it's a bad comparison but again to a typical uh, Japanese car on the road uh, this is the car you want to have you know if, if you were given an option you know um, guys pick your pick your machines or pick your weapons you know uh, any day I think uh, this is the car that I'll pick if I want to go to war if I want to go and attack the world and if I'm having a bad day and I feel like I want to drop here and just overtake uh, this is the car I will have you know um, if let's say I see an XR in front and I'm going like oh look at that XR look at that color it's so horrible and you want to just break out and go that extra uh, mile and drop again yeah you get to hear that engine uh, raw purr whatever it is you know again this is not a turbo uh, so you will not you will not get that immediate acceleration but the power is very linear you know? and one thing I must say is that if you notice that uh, when I was changing or changing lanes earlier again guys don't do this changing lane on this car the car is actually very flat it goes very very flat while changing lanes so um, yeah extremely nice very nice again on corners hugs the road beautifully let's do Subang Jaya Sunway PJ and go because I forgot my smart tag so I'll do now a power run from the toll gate not a power run but I like go on manual and to see uh, how fast it picks up turbo in this car it's not going to kick you back it's not going to pull you to a point that you feel uh, glued to the seat but it does give you the natural nice progression line uh, from uh, first second third and fourth um, and I guess it's more playful that way I'm sure you'd have picked up that <laughs> that that sound on the mic uh, so so yes <laughs> and which again I think I'm being unfair because you get in this car and because the car is so 
European like um, we tend to compare this car to a Golf R line or a Peugeot 308 opposed to comparing to um, I don't know a Corolla or a Civic you know uh, personally I find the Civic has got one of the uh, worst NVH in the market uh, for the class uh, you pay a hundred or thousand dollar car uh, the end of the car is I think uh, not up to mark but again maybe the design of the manufacturer was to give you that feel like you hear the engine um, uh, again not my cup of tea So guys, um, I guess that's my uh, review of the drive of the Mazda CX-3. Uh, in conclusion, um, I think I got a few things to say about the car. This car is not for everyone. So if someone thinks like, oh, you know what, you're in the market to get a car, look at the CX-3. No, no. This car isn't for everybody. You know, this car is a little more hardcore, than, or a little more different than uh, a normal, uh, typical family sedan because this car is meant to stir up emotions. The car looks, again, not everybody may like it, but I love it. Um, again, um, if you're a car guy, uh, this car will um, pull to you. The paint on this car, immaculate, fantastic. The car's drive, again, uh, it's so engaging, it's so nice to drive the car. The chassis is so well pulled together. Uh, it's a fun car to be in every single day. Uh, NVH, uh, I find that the uh, NVH on this car isn't uh, to a point it's uh, muted, uh, you can't feel the environment. Uh, I think it's a, it's a design of the car to make sure that you can feel the car, feel the environment. Um, and that's very evident from the fact they put this um, a steering in here, which gives you a nice feedback on what's on the road. Normally when the car it has got electric power steering, uh, you don't feel anything what's happening on the road. Uh, again, this car, very nice you know you, you you feel you really feel what's happening um, you know exactly um, um, how tight you are taking your corners uh, but because the feedback is there and the car is talking to you and that's something which is hard to say about all the cars um, people uh, now equate the Mazdas to the BMWs pre year 2000 and I can see why because BMWs back in the days so they were more uh, focus on making cars which work for everybody. The BMWs were not the cars that everybody would buy. But car guys who buy BMWs back in those days loved it because why? It wasn't a car that everybody will buy. It's a car that's for them. It's a car that spoke to them. The car that uh, told them, look here, this is how much you can take. This is how much you're going. Uh, a little more than the uh, speed limit or this is how, how much the car can take the car talks to you and I think this car is one of those cars that bring up memories for car guys who have driven the older BMWs who have driven the more I guess um, communicative talkative car um, I'm I'll be I'll be implicit to see what this car can do if there was like a 2 liter turbo or uh, even the 2 liter turbo in this car um, I don't know what happened to this car, you know. Uh, given the car status is nice, looks good. Um, I think if you put a much more powerful engine in this car, uh, it'll be a very dangerous combination uh, because this is one of those cars that you need to be alert while driving uh, because the car makes you want to push more and more and more. So, the choice of the engine in this car being an NA 2 liter. I personally feel it is the uh, best possible decision that Mazda could have made. So again, that's my conclusion. Hope you enjoy my review. Uh, again, if you like what, I, what you see and like, what you see and hear, what you see and like, if you like what you see and like, if you like what you see and hear, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, this is me, Tanakishan, saying bye, guys.